They're not experiencing a gold rush, and they don't want to either. Last night, we spoke with Maria Kadoglu. She's a woman from the Halkidiki region in Greece. She was one of 10,000 people who marched last Saturday to protest a Canadian gold mine project in the region. The planned Scurias Open Pit Gold Mine is one of three mines owned by Vancouver-based Eldorado Gold in the north of Greece. Eldorado has been granted an environmental permit to begin preparing the mining site, but it still needs additional permits before the digging can begin. Paul Wright is the CEO of Eldorado Gold Corporation. We reached him in Vancouver. Mr. Wright, what are you going to do about this growing public opposition to your gold mining operations in northern Greece? Well, in reality, we're not actually experiencing growing opposition. I think what we're we're seeing is some fairly effective misrepresentation of, of, of the realities in in Greece. Um, you know, I think there's been in recent days a lot of press relating to a uh, protest that occurred in, in Thessaloniki over the weekend. Um, Ten thousand persons were reported to attend the demonstration in Thessaloniki. The reality is that there were the bulk bulk of these people were there protesting against, you know, austerity measures being imposed by by the Greek government and a relatively small portion. Well, uh, we, we, spo- we spoke with a woman who was at the demonstrations, yes. who, uh, yes. and she says it was the, 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 the goal was to try and protest against this gold mine and that, uh, or your, your gold mining operations, and that was specifically... Oh, I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't dispute the fact that there were elements of the protest that were in regarding to our gold mining operations, but I'd probably like to, to highlight a, a, a demonstration that, that occurred earlier in, in the month, actually March the 6th, uh, which wasn't widely reported by, by the press, and and this was actually a demonstration, uh, you know, in in the municipality of Aristotle, which is a population of around twenty thousand, and where we had five thousand persons, which represents twenty five percent of the of the population, who came out actually in support. Now these are the people who I refer to as the the the, the real local people protesting actually in favor of the investment protesting to protect their employment and, you know, the environment in which they operate in. You know, have, you have some local politicians as well, some mayors in the region uh, who, who have joined with these people, that, including the woman I spoke with, who say that their concern is that El Dorado is threatening a traditional economy of tourism and agriculture and that the, the, the kind of operation that you want to run is not compatible with these, these traditional economies. Yeah, look, I mean, I think, you know, in any, you know, free society, obviously, there are people that have, have differences of opinions. And, you know, we as a company, you know, welcome engagement in, in terms of sort of facts-based discussions with, with any and all groups. I mean, the fact of the matter is that this, this project has gone through an extensive and exhaustive process of permitting in compliance with all EU and Greek legislation. Uh, that included a full public consultation uh, a process. This process itself culminated with a non-binding meeting of the council members of, of the prefecture of Halkidiki, and those are 26 in total, and this is back in December 2010. And these council members represent the population from the regions of Halkidiki, and at that meeting, 21 of the council members voted in favor of our projects, five abstained, and nobody voted against. Now that is the, the way the process works. One of the operations that you're going to be, that you're running, was previously owned by European gold fields, is that right? Th- th- that's correct. These, the assets in Halkidiki were previously owned by European gold fields. Well, and, and the manager for European gold fields, as Stephen Sharp gave an interview to Bloomberg uh, just last October, and he said that, the, that he believes that the environmentalism and local opposition is a huge obstacle to gold mining in Greece. He said there is a strong groundswell of opposition to those mines going ahead. And uh, he feels that, it's, uh, that this is, uh, there's a clear choice between tourism and mining being presented to the Greek population. Would you disagree with Mr. Sharp? Yes, yes I would. Well, Stephen Sharp is not an environmentalist or a local uh, opposition leader. He is a, a mining manager, and he says that the he points to one of the sites that you're now running, Olympia, which was previously run by a company called TVX. He says he told Bloomberg, a quote, they can just point to TVX, meaning local people can point to it, and the mess that was left there. It's it's a very easy case to make that this mining is destructive. So can you understand if there are examples, maybe your company is running a clean operation, but if there are examples of this, can you understand why people don't want your mine? 
you know, again, you're, you're relating to one person's opinion who I consider to be in, inaccurate. I mean, I, there's nothing really more I can say. You know, in terms of, you know, environmental um, liabilities, environmental cleanup, you know, El Dorado, frankly, as part of the conditions of its EIA, has taken on the responsibility to clean up historical tailings that go back decades, long before, uh, obviously, either our involvement or the um, or TVX environment. Uh, we're it- in the process. I was just going to mention there's a, a group of masked men who attacked your Hakadiki mine site in February. Was yes. that was that a, a signal to your company of trouble to come? You know, I think it's a concern to to the company. It was a concern to our employees. It's a grave concern to to the government that there are elements in, in Greek society that are prepared to engage in violent illegal activity. I mean, I think you know the government rightly so takes this very seriously. You saw broad condemnation of the act across the society, across the media, and across all political parties. Um, you know, it's you know, it's the type of action that, frankly, you know, typically won't be tolerated in, in free democratic societies. At the same time, though, uh, local people say that police have used that incident at your mine, uh, that incident and public protests to violently repress them and uh, hold them without charges. They've even gone as far as accusing your company of working with the police to repress local opposition. How do you respond to that? Well, I think we obviously would disagree with that. I mean, to the extent that our employees were frankly assaulted and threatened, you know, one would expect, as, as we have done, that they would provide assistance to to the security and to the police in terms of their investigation, and that's the extent that I'll comment. But they said that they, particularly one uh, demonstration was met with extreme brutality by riot police uh, just last year, and they, they cite that as an example of the Canadian, your company, uh, working with the police. No, I, I think that's you know that's inaccurate. I mean, if I could, if I could talk you to what a what a typical demonstration uh, constitutes as it relates to uh, to our to our operations, what they really are by and large is is fairly well organized attacks. The organizers bus in people from various parts of Greece, put women in the front line to provoke the police. And then essentially the radicals, the anarchists come in from the middle and start throwing rocks and petrol bombs at the police. And this has all been uh, evidenced uh, photographically. And then when the police react, they're accused of of police brutality. And of course, somewhere in the front, there's always some poor unfortunate woman with tears in her eyes who will, you know, give an interview to the unsuspecting press stating that the police were violent. It's, you know, it's very well, very well done very well organized. The woman I spoke with yesterday it was very reasonable and uh, was concerned about the economy and uh, doesn't sound like she took part in some kind of a, a piece of theater as you're describing it. Well, that's your opinion. I can't really, you know, well, who am I to comment? Judging it by what she had to say, she was she did she described something as a genuine groundswell of public opposition to your mining operations. Well, what I'm reporting is is factually true. Mr. Wright, thank you for your time. You're most welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That was Paul Wright. He is the CEO of El Dorado Gold Corporation. We reached him in Vancouver. And residents of the Halkidiki region have challenged the legality of El Dorado's environmental permit in Greece's Supreme Court. That decision, which could affect the fate of the mine, is pending. (laughs) 